Hi, fifth grade. Um, it's Miss Bonjell here. Today, you are going to be listening and following along with me as I read this article all about taste. What is your favorite food? Is it cold, smooth, creamy chocolate ice cream that melts in your mouth? Or is it a crunchy, salty, sour dill pickle? Maybe you crave crisp potato chips or the sweet tartness of a crunchy green apple. Even so-called fussy eaters usually seek a variety of taste sensations. No one would voluntarily eat the same five foods over and over again. But in reality, there are only five basic tastes. They are sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and savory. The differences we detect among foods are for the most part differences in smell. In fact, some scientists say that 80% of taste is really smell. You may realize this when you have a cold. A cold makes the mucous membranes in your nose swell up and greatly reduces your ability to smell. This in turn affects your ability to taste what you're eating. But smell is not the only sensation that's part of the experience we call tasting. Through touch, we are aware of the texture and the temperature of food. We also hear the sound food makes as we chew it. The sense of sight is part of appreciating food. When food of different colors is arranged nicely on a plate, it attracts us. A gray blob of mush thrown into a bowl does not attract us. So in a way, all five senses help you enjoy the flavor of the food your body needs. Okay, it says tasting starts in the taste buds. An adult tongue has about 10,000 of them. Each taste bud is made up of a group of cells that looks like an oval flower bud. At the top of each bud is a hole to let the flavor molecules in. At the bottom are nerve fibers that carry taste messages to the brain. The taste buds are grouped together in the papillae. Those are the little bumps that you feel on the top of your tongue. The five basic tastes can be detected anywhere on your tongue. When professional tasters try such things as cheese, wine, coffee, and tea, they never swallow. That's because we don't taste things after they go past our mouth. Do we need to chew and taste food, or could a daily pill nourish your body? Consider the strange case of Tom, who could not swallow thanks to an accident. Food was put into his stomach through a tube. Although many people could survive this way, Tom always felt hungry and didn't gain weight. Finally, he asked to chew the food before it was put into the tube. From then on, Tom gained weight and felt satisfied. Where does our sweet tooth come from? Possibly we crave sweets because they may stimulate the production of serotonin in the body. Serotonin has a calming effect on our nerves, so the craving for sweets may really be an attempt to overcome bad feelings. The body may crave food, foods that it needs. Years ago, many children were given a daily dose of cod liver oil. It's good for you because it's rich in vitamins A and D. Many kids hated the strong taste, but studies showed that kids under five liked it. Interestingly, kids that, that young need extra vitamin A and D to help them grow. Our choice of food is based only partly on taste. The culture in which we live plays a big role in determining what we will and what we will not eat. An ancient Aztecs dined on roasted dog. 
Stir-fried puppy is still eaten in the Far East. Ooh. The French enjoy frog legs, and Italians relish deep-fried songbird. The American mania for beef turns stomachs of Hindus, who consider the cow sacred, and devout Jews and Muslims think pork is unclean.